Hello guys, what's going on? Happy Tuesday. Taco Tuesday, shall we say. And also, World Nutella Day. Got a bunch of festivities going on today. And since Nutella is one of Sammy's favorite treats, we might as well make something delicious. Got the Mexican tunes on. I think I'm gonna switch them off for now. Turn them back on later when we start getting into the taco stuff. Go back to our, our chill hop. There we go. sick no what happened I'm so sad for you is it just a cold or is it like actually the flu the sinuses you only hear about 25% or so out of your left ear. Oh, that's the worst feeling. And just all stuffed up. No. I am so sad for you. Well, I hope you get better soon. Yeah, you're hacking stuff up. It's kind of just that time of year, hey? Winter time, you always get sick so easily. Yeah, when it gets plugged up in your ear, that is like the worst feeling. It starts like popping and stuff. Ugh. Oh yeah. Nike. Patriots, 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 Patriots. Eight years is a long time. Eight years is a long time. Thank you for the eight month resub, Nike. Amazing, dude. How does time go by that fast? Okay, so World Nutella Day. The first World Nutella Day was established by the American blogger, Sarah Rosso, on February 5th, 2007. So 12 years ago already now. She loved Nutella so much that she thought it deserved a holiday and Nutella fans loved it. They came together from all over the world to celebrate their passion for Nutella on social media through photos, recipes, and messages. So let's make something with Nutella today, guys. Nike, how was your day? Good to see you in here, man. So 10 easy ways to celebrate World Nutella Day. Make a recipe with Nutella. So we might as well do that today. Write a song or a poem about Nutella. Maybe Sammy will sing us a Nutella song. <laughs> Enjoy Nutella somewhere interesting, like on top of a mountain. Strike a pose with it. Okay, we can cross this one off right now. Sammy, get your Nutella jar. Huh? Yeah. What? Come on. What? Gotta strike a pose with it. World Nutella Day, not Kate Nutella Day. <laughs> Sammy would forget the lyrics. You guys, come on now. There's your jar. Okay. Strike a pose. <laughs> we love Nutella. Precious. <laughs> Just hook it to my veins. Yeah. Create some Nutella inspired art. So do you use the Nutella as the paint? Oh, yeah, you do. do an original <laughs> flavor pairing. Well, I know Nutella and raspberry, always a great combo or strawberries. Relive your first Nutella experience. Oh shoot. I don't know if that was like anywhere special. Probably when I was younger though. It's like, mom, what's this? We need this. Life-changing, for sure. 
thing my grandma gave to me just for the first time. Your grandma, Sammy? Yeah. You miss the crepes with Nutella in Europe. So do I. Or the Belgian waffles. Oh my gosh. Yeah, those are some good Nutella memories for sure. And it, does it taste better in Europe? Does it guys? I don't know. One might say it does. Introduce someone to Nutella for the first time. I know that we have some loyal followers and viewers that have never had Nutella in their life. And I don't know what's holding them back, really. What up, Buff Bagwell? Welcome back, man. You've been busy, haven't ya? It's like whenever you're not in here for a while, that must mean things are going well at the restaurant, or at least I hope so. So my original idea to celebrate World Nutella Day was to make some really easy donuts, like kind of like little beignets. They're just like small enough to pop in your mouth. So maybe even we could call them Timbits. So we make it out of pancake batter. So the same batter that I used for the pancakes for brunch, we can use that to make donuts, but we deep fry them. And then the thing that Sammy created at work. So this came from me not wanting to waste pancake batter after brunch service in the restaurant. So I would just take a little scoop, scoop little balls of the pancake batter into the deep fryer, obviously fry them till they're cooked and golden brown, drizzle Nutella on top and toasted coconut flakes. Tim bits, yeah, Tim, Tim bits from Tim Hortons. They're like little donut holes. They used to be so good, Annie. Oh my gosh, but they're not that good anymore. It's been pretty intense at work. Nice. Well, that's good. Buff tomorrow at work. Tomorrow, Buff, I get to learn how to make a, I guess, mold cured salumi. So Rosette de Leon, it's called. So we dip it in bacteria and that's gonna be like a dry cured salumi with the white mold out on the outside. Pretty excited to learn how to make that. Nike, you just had dinner. Now you're eating ice cold Reese's cups. He likes his Reese well chilled. Bedtime is 8 p.m. That means you're getting up early then. You always thought they were kidding about Timbits, Annie. That's hilarious. You call them munchkins. You know the one that reminds you. I did not get around to doing the biltong. I did do like a simple beef jerky, but I didn't do the biltong. I want you around for this buff, or at least like have your pointers for making biltong. Cause honestly, I never heard of it before in my life until you said something about it. It's too scary. We can't do this on our own. Okay, so that was the plan for celebrating World Nutella Day. How does that sound guys? Some donuts, Nutella and coconut. Would you be happy with this? If someone chose that way to share Nutella with you? Or would you make something else? What would you guys make with Nutella? Would you go for like a cookie or maybe a brownie? The other things I was thinking of like an ice cream sundae or a milkshake. You don't mind Buff? You would even get an in-call on Discord. What? Okay. Well, we'll just start working on a biltong soon then. Crepes, Annie, that's what you would go for. Yes, I agree. Crepes with Nutella is like such a good combo. You're gonna be moving soon and you're gonna get your cooking streams back on course. I'm so happy for you, man. That is so, so cool. We'll actually get to see the Buff Bagwell stream. Awesome, dude. Okay, so I need to scale down my recipe for pancake batter before we start. So usually I already make a half recipe. 
of what I usually would make in the restaurant. I'm gonna half that again. I don't want too much donuts, guys, because obviously we have that carrot cake from yesterday. Yeah. The five and a half pound carrot cake. <laughs> Did we eat a quarter of it yesterday? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> We did though, yeah, Sammy's like, but but we actually did though. Okay, so one and a half cups of flour. Forty-five mils of sugar. Half a teaspoon of salt. One tablespoon of baking powder. And 1.1 cups of milk. 45 mils of melted butter. And one duck egg. That's all right. Ah! Yeah, it's important to get your veggies in. Just trying to get more carrots into my nutrition, right, Annie? By the way, Annie, how's your uh, gluten-free stuff going? Are you still finding it really hard? Okay, let's get all these ingredients out. And I guess, since the pancake batter doesn't take too long to make, we should probably set up our deep fryer on the stove top first. And the reason that I thought, eh, might as well make donuts today is because we're doing beer battered fish for our fish tacos later on. So we're already going to have the deep fryer set up. Might as well use it two times in one day. Hey guys, somebody was in here yesterday saying, how come you never make unhealthy food? Well, today's the day. <laughs> You got 10 ton of corn to cook. Corn, I think it's illegal in the US because of misinformation about mushrooms. What is that buff? Corn? Never heard of that. Okay, I'm going to go grab the deep fryer oil. It's a fungus extract. Interesting. Hello, Rook. Welcome in, man. How are you today? Okay. Big ass thing of oil. So this is gonna be our deep fry pot. Our other cast iron here is for cooking our tortillas. So when setting up uh, fryer oil in a pot at home. You never want to fill it higher than halfway just because it might bubble over and that's scary stuff. I honestly don't really like deep frying at home because it is pretty dangerous, but I don't have a gas stove so it's a little bit less dangerous if you just have an electric stove top. But yeah guys, no more than halfway up just because you have to think about the disbursement when you put your stuff into the oil. Rook, the 11 month resub. Yes, dude. We just had one yesterday, too. Amazing, you guys. And just a little note while you guys are in here I don't know if you've heard about just Twitch's little time. VIP program that they set up recently, but each streamer now gives out VIP badges to their special people in their community, obviously. 
and obviously you're allowed up to 50. So the way that I want to do my VIPs in my stream is once you guys start to hit those 12 month in a row resubs is you're gonna get a VIP badge. So first 50 people to do that, you will be a very important person to the Onion Squad. And Annie, just one month behind you. Thank you so much for the 10 months resub. Wow, guys, wow. Hey, Moss, going back to up there. So how long does the oil last after opening? We purchased that, honestly, probably about a year ago now. No, more than that, Mary. Really? Oh yeah, probably about a year. But the thing is, is we keep it in a cold, dark room. And obviously the oil has a box around it so the sun can't get to it. And this is actually oil that we've used once before and then we strained it and now we're reusing it for the second time. So if you strain out those particles, it's not gonna go bad as fast. And obviously keeping it in a cool, dark place really preserves it. And the way that you'll kind of know if your oil is bad is it's gonna have like a not good smell to it. It's gonna kind of smell like puke, almost like sour-y. Otherwise, it should just taste like, or sorry, smell like deep fried food if you have used it before or just smell really clean and almost smell like nothing. That is so weird buff. It's not technically, technically mushroom, it's a fungus extract. So why is it banned then? Air pockets as well, that is true. Yeah, you definitely don't want any air in there. Okay, so I'm going to turn that just onto a medium heat. We'll start heating this up. And the temperature for that oil is we're gonna want to bring it up to 350 Fahrenheit, between 350 and 375 Fahrenheit. To me, that's kind of the perfect donut cooking temperature. Any higher than that, and the donuts will get really dark on the outside before the inside is cooked. Any lower than that temp, and the donuts are just gonna soak in all of that oil, and they're gonna get really heavy and like really fatty and oily inside, so we don't want that. 350 to 375 Fahrenheit. And the way that I usually measure that, is just with a candy or a deep fry thermometer. So something like that. It has a little clip on the side. You don't want it to touch the bottom of your pan. And obviously the closer it is to the middle, the more accurate the reading will be. You need to buy an entire new batch of them. Entire new batch of what, Buff? Someone broke the entire box of them. The thermometers? Should I stir the oil? Mm, I don't think so, Moss. I've never really stirred the oil to get it to heat up faster. Because as it heats, obviously it's gonna be the hottest in the center and then it usually just kind of disperses out like this. So it kind of stirs itself. Do I get nervous having a whole pot of hot oil in my stove? Yes, yes I do, Nikki. Deep frying at work, way less stressful than deep frying at home. I do not like deep frying at home, but it is really fun. And there are certain instances where you just have to do it. So obviously make sure you're well educated on how to deep fry at home, and then you won't have an accident. And if you don't know what not to do, I would definitely recommend searching um, deep fryer fails on YouTube if you really want to get scared. What the hell, Buff? How do you break an entire box of thermometers? 
Yeah, and if it helps, play some Bob Marley. Exactly, Annie. Stir it up. What's the healthiest oil for deep frying, though? I believe the healthiest oil is... We've actually used that oil at a previous job that I worked at. It's actually a blend of canola and safflower, Sammy? Yeah. Canola and safflower. As it has like zero trans fats in it. It's supposed to be the best for deep frying. This is just straight up canola oil. You could use grapeseed. To me, that's really expensive to use. Same with peanut oil, but you might get a little bit better flavor from those. Yeah, the healthiest, honestly, not that much healthier. I don't think it really matters. Okay, let's get into making this donut, AKA pancake batter. This is a life hack, guys. It will change your life. So we need our flour, sugar, salt, and baking powder. So Annie, you're homesick from work then today? Is that what's going on? Have you had to take a couple days off? Our wet ingredients, milk, butter, and eggs. And I guess we should post Nutella up here. You soldiered through it. Yeah, you did. <laughs> Do you regret that decision though? Were you like, maybe I should have stayed home? And there's definitely been times where it's like, oh, I'll be fine. I'll go to work today. And then you're just like terrible at work. You're like, I wish I never did this. It requires a lot of Ricola drops. Yes. <laughs> okay. Let's come back over here. We need one smaller bowl for our wet ingredients and one larger bowl for our dry ingredients. And then we're going to mix our dry, mix our wet together, pour the wet ingredients into the dry ingredients. You got a batch of wolf fish in for the restaurant. Those fish are so cool looking. So how do you prepare that? Or no, sorry, I was thinking about the lion fish. What the heck's a wolf fish? Oh, they're not cool looking. Those are ugly. That's an ugly ass fish. But they do control green crab and sea urchin populations. Okay. Okay. So what is that fish compared to then, Buff? Nawaru? Nawaru, thanks for the follow. Welcome in. Your dad caught an ocean wolf fish once. Monkfish looks real bad, but tastes amazing. Yeah, monkfish, oh, so ugly. So ugly. Okay. There's our bigger bowl. Oh God, it's taco. Taco has arrived for Taco Tuesday. Wolffish is very similar to monkfish. Okay, so let me ask you this, if you're familiar with this. So rockfish here is like kind of the cheaper version of lingcod. Is that kind of how wolffish is to monkfish? Is it like the little bit cheaper version to monkfish? Okay, dry ingredients first. They're both expensive. Fair enough. Is it as cold here where I am than it is in Toronto? No. 
sadly no heat and welcome in a fellow Canadian thanks for popping in we did get snow the past couple of days here which is a rarity for Vancouver Island and temperatures are hovering around minus five Celsius but it is rare for it to kind of get below minus 10 here so definitely are in a cold snap right now you're getting two to four centimeters of ice pellets tomorrow oh my god and freezing rain all I can say do not drive <laughs> if you plan to go anywhere just don't freezing rain and ice pellets that's definitely a recipe for a disaster so starting with our dry ingredients for our donut batter one and a half cups of flour hey box fetish welcome in how's it going you don't drive you bus you have to go to work though you know what that's what i did when i grew up in alberta in the winter time i just bust everywhere i was like i'd rather the bus crash or something like that than to get in an accident in my own car even though it took longer on the bus and you had to deal with being in the public still way better option safety wise hey fiscal eagle how are you okay let's get into a uh, sugar so 45 mils of sugar I know that's a weird measurement guys but trust it's gonna save you just a little bit of dishes so what I do is I usually measure out the 45 mils of sugar and then you can reuse the same measuring cup for the butter because it's the exact same amount but luckily we have this awesome little pampered chef measuring cup so you push it down for your measurement for the dry stuff so you fill it up to there push it out and then this little measuring cup part is for the wet stuff it's super handy okay deep fryer update currently we're just over 125 fahrenheit so we have like over 200 degrees to go still gotta go walk the ferret <laughs> okay see you later buff hopefully you'll be back later hey 45 mils of sugar our one tablespoon of baking powder so that's our leavener for our donuts Obviously, these are not yeast donuts. This is like a cheater donut recipe. But it works so well. And then lastly, half a teaspoon of salt da, 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 da. and then all we're gonna do is just whisk that stuff together incorporate it evenly okay set that aside next up our wet ingredients so we have our one and a half eggs aka one duck egg crack that into there and we'll whisk that up on its own first just want to make sure i knew i heard that piece of shell it was like tink in the bottom of the bowl there we go we're clean 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 so what's everyone been eating today are you also participating in taco tuesday so 
we want our egg evenly mixed here, guys, before we even add in the milk or the butter. Don't want any slimy bits of egg white that's not mixed in with the yolk. You want it really nice and smooth. Okay, that looks good. Apparently it's Chinese New Year. It is, yeah. I should have done something on the stream to do, to celebrate that. You had Szechuan beef for lunch today at school. Nice, nice. Was it tasty, Annie? Were you impressed with it? So 1.1 cups. okay but not really authentic well it, it's food at least right gotta count for something hey deep fryer update we're coming up to 200 fahrenheit so we just got to measure out our little bit of butter to milk, 45 mils. So one tablespoon is 30 mils. So one and a half tablespoons. No, one tablespoon is 15 mils, right guys? Yeah. So three tablespoons of butter melted. Okay, you actually got that from the cafeteria for lunch. Nice. They make meals for kids in three shifts. Wow. Yeah, that must be a hard job. I mean, Sam and I did some high volume catering in Vancouver. That shit is crazy. Welcome in, dog. How are ya? And I shot going on today guys so we're just gonna pop this into chef mike basically my microwave is my designated butter melter pretty much the only thing i use it for yeah more butter Get our Nutella in the frame. It's more about the Nutella than the donuts. Just a little midday snack before we start with our taco. got 75 mils. I got to pour a touch of this out. <laughs> yeah, you don't even know what she's making, but you do know that it needs more butter. Thank you, Indog. Perfect. So butter goes into here. This is gonna get hard to whisk. I can tell already. Just another day on Cook with Kate pushing those limits. Taco fiesta, yeah, that was the word that I was looking for. Our taco time. <laughs> and 
now we whisk. So there's our dry ingredients. Gently whisk. And so with us adding the, the warm butter to the cold milk though, is those two things are not going to go together. So the butter is just gonna get chunky and kind of float on top. It's actually what we want. It's gonna give us a fluffier end result. So if you kind of think more to like a biscuit dough where you have those little chunks of butter in there to help aerate it, kind of the same thing that's gonna be going on in this donut slash pancake batter. It reminds you of Milka Chocolade Miganzen Hazelnusen. What's that, Sammy? So milk chocolate. What is Ganzen Hazelnusen? Something with hazelnuts. Milk chocolate. What is Gonzin? Annie, teach us. Teach us. So now, come over with your whisk. Just make a little well in the center of our dry ingredients. And that's where we're going to pour our wet stuff. Whole hazelnuts. Oh, milk chocolate with whole hazelnuts. Heck yes. Hazelnut and coconut though, actually a really nice combo together. Same with uh, macadamia nuts and coconut. Also great nuts combo. I don't know if they're as good as D's nuts though. We're back to that today guys. I think I'm actually gonna switch from the whisk right now. I've learned my lesson the past couple of weeks making this recipe that the whisk gets bunged up. So why not just save our time now and switch over to a spatula? You got timed out in a chat when you suggested these nuts. Oh gosh, Annie. <sighs> I'm sorry about that. I'm sorry for you. It was on a chess channel. Yeah, literally no sense of humor. <laughs> Ooh, yeah, Ritter. Those are also really good chocolate bars. That's true. Ritter Sport, dark chocolate with whole hazelnuts. So good. Okay, so now we're going to slowly mix in our dry to our wet. So see how lumpy this is still? We want that. This is the magic of a good fluffy pancake batter. You don't want to over mix it until it's smooth. This is the secret, but you didn't hear it from me, guys. So basically just until you can tell that all the flour is gonna kind of be soaked in. So yes, this is a very thick batter recipe. And Anchovy Schumann actually made pancakes from this recipe on Sunday morning, I believe. And they said it was really, really good. Well, that makes me happy that you guys are trying out the recipes that I share. So here is another variation from that. that was developed by me not wanting to waste food. So there we go, guys. And then I'm gonna use a small kind of ice cream scoop. So one of these styles where you pinch the end and it'll let it come out. I'm gonna go with this size. I think this is about maybe a tablespoon in size. Because you have to think about how that's going to expand. Is we want these to be like nice bite size. So if this doubles in size from this, that's kind of pushing it on what you can fit in your mouth. So always go about half the size of what you want your end result to be. Our oil is sitting at 250. So it's starting to heat up pretty quickly now. We have our Nutella. 
Is it mixed up? One of these is opened. Sammy already got into it. There we go. I was like, that one's way too hard to open. Just kind of cracked into it though. And Sammy's trick is actually to just mix the Nutella with a little bit of whipping cream in a pan until you get like this nice kind of Nutella sauce that you can drizzle over the donuts. So we gotta make that while we're waiting for our pan to heat up. And then we also have to toast some coconut. So that's gonna be our garnish. We can also put the chocolate crunchy curls on there. Right? <laughs> so just uh, shredded. Make sure we got that um, fancy, fancy coconut, unsweetened, shredded. gotta toast this. That's how we're gonna maximize kind of the nutty flavor that we want from coconut. finishing waiting for the deep fryer for these donuts. I'm gonna spread out your coconut in the pan like so. Nutella cream. I mean, I think crepes would honestly be easier to make than these donuts. Yeah. Like crepes, you could whip out in five ish minutes. Did I watch the 2019 Continental Curling Cup? I did not, Annie. I'm a terrible Canadian. Spoon. Okay, let's get into this Nutella. Mm -hmm. We'll roll with that much. A good spoonful worth. Yeah, you're actually more Canadian than I am. That Nutella though. And just a touch of cream, just enough to kind of loosen this up. So start with a small amount. You could always add more as you loosen it. So let's just go over to the stove top right now. Almost that time. So we'll turn that onto a nice medium heat. Our fryer's coming up to 325. So we're almost at the temp. Okay, we got our scoop ready. We're gonna need a sheet pan lined with some paper towel to kind of drain the donuts or rest them on after they come out of the fryer. Soak up that grease if there's any extra stuff. Like a soap. Let's put that right here actually. Since we're not using that other pan right now. And then one other thing that we'll need is a spider or maybe a slotted spoon is probably something that you guys have, but just something to take the donuts out of the oil. Okay, start to stir 
stir this up. Hey guys, we're getting there. How's that lighting? Is this gonna help us? Maybe a touch, hey? Patiently waiting. And then after this, we are going to make up our tortilla dough because that's gonna have to rest for about 45 minutes. And then we can work on the rest of our taco stuff. Seems like the whole world loves Nutella. I think so, butterfly. I really think so. Let's all celebrate it together. Ham's defense loves Nutella. Nike. You're not a huge fan of it, Indog. But then again, you don't eat sweets. Yeah, I don't eat it a ton. I can definitely say that. But give me an excuse to eat it, and I'm there. Hey, we're creeping up to 350 Fahrenheit on our deep fryer, so... It's gonna be donut time right away, guys. And how are we going to plate our donuts? Black bowl. Black bowl? Yeah, and that's what you want? Uh. Or white bowl? Way more contrast than the white bowl. it up. We're going to make a donut mountain. And then we also have to keep in mind that when we start dropping our donuts into that oil is it's going to start to cool off the oil. So stovetop deep frying, I've learned over time that when you first start deep frying is you want to turn up your heat pretty high. So right now it's sitting at medium, coming up slowly. When we put our donuts in initially, I'm gonna crank it up to medium high to keep that oil nice and hot. If we let it cool off too much, is our donuts won't be as crunchy. They'll get a little bit more soggy, soak up more oil, and they're not gonna taste as good. So you wanna keep that oil as close to temp as possible. Cause I find usually it drops about 25 degrees when you first start frying. And what's up, Daydreamer? How are you doing today?
We got him. Chago. Okay, we're at 350. I'm going to let it come up to 375 so that when it does drop in temp, it'll still be in with our parameters for making the perfect donuts. I think that's the best way to go about this. when we don't turn on a timer for <laughs> the coconut. Yep. So what did I say? Not even five minutes that took. Let's start over. Yeah, uh-oh. Uh-oh, indeed, in dog. That's a little too toasty. That's a too toasty. At least we didn't waste a lot. Maybe half a cup's worth. Starting over. The mistake was made. We will not give up. We will conquer. Yeah, whoops. R.I.P. R.I.P. Coconut. Dust yourself off and try again. Okay, I'm not even going to set a timer. I'm just going to watch this. Loco Coco. Yeah, it is feeding time. She has been resting up all day. Taking her out on some pretty good walks lately, and then at night she actually starts to limp. So she's definitely showing her age. So she hasn't really settled down the last couple days because my parents have been away. So she's been a little unsettled. So just let her rest and sleep today. Seems like she's doing better. She doesn't even know her own limits, guys. 77 year old lady. Acts like she's 30. What would she do if we put food on a string and suspended it? She would for sure try and get it. She would jump up, Annie. Savvy just comes in. <laughs> That's one way to celebrate World Nutella Day. On a spoon. On a spoon? You should write like a Dr. Seuss book about Nutella, Sammy. <laughs> yeah, it's feeding time for Sammy as well. <laughs> Coconut's almost there, guys. And right after it comes out, we can start dropping some donuts. I think I'm good with this. As far as the coconut toasting, it's just, just golden brown. So we'll set that aside. Get it ready for garnishing. Uh, no, I need to the ones that I took. And now, thermometer is reading just, just under 375. I'm confident though. Start dropping in some batter. I already took it 
it up. You want to go pretty fast here. Usually try and draw around like eight or ten per batch. You want to keep them pretty consistent in size. Two, four, six, eight, nine, ten. Look at those babies fry up. And they kind of just flip themselves over as they cook. So usually I just let that happen. Have I ever heard of the sublime triangle? I don't think so, Annie. In dog, I'm using Pacific Red Snapper today for the fish tacos. intensely initially. Now it's kind of slowing down. I think it's almost time to start taking those out. Mrs. W, how are you? Yeah, it looks like you are having a ball. Yeah, they do keep their shape really nicely. Little tin bits. I think those are good, guys. Feeling confident about that. So a little update, our oil is still hovering at 365. So all I did was turn it to medium high when I first dropped that batter. So now we can keep frying because our oil didn't cool off too much. So now we can just go right into dropping the next ones. Mesmerizing. Chuka chuka. Should we test one, guys? Let's try this one. Rip it in half. Fully cooked on the inside. Mmm, look how fluffy that is. And notice how I'm not. I'm not gonna toss them in sugar. I don't like super sweet things either in dogs, so I'm gonna let the Nutella shine here. Mmm. And let me say this, you'll get a tastier donut if you use old fryer oil. This is like the secret of so many places. Wow, not me. Yeah, that is so fluffy. You want to douse them in powdered sugar. That would still be good with Nutella. Totally. Plus, I just like the way that the powdered sugar looks as well. Try 
guys, deep frying is like one of those really mesmerizing tasks for me. Like I could just stand here all day. Just like push these floating little things around. You're gonna need a donut cart. Okay, stir up our Nutella cream. And it's time to dress these babies up. Posting a live notification on Discord for us. Get some more people in here. At every 
everybody. Oh my gosh, guys, it's time. It's time. In the UK, cod is the number one fish used for fish and chips, and in the US, it's tilapia. Oh, tilapia for fish and chips? Really? Dang. Yeah, it's mostly cod or rockfish up here, as well as snapper, obviously. And a lot of halibut. That's true, yeah, halibut's also popular, but that's an expensive one, if you can afford it. So now, we will take our donuts. We will make a mountain in this bowl of donuts. Lucky for us, they fit quite perfectly in here. So we're just gonna make a beautiful little donut tower. <laughs> this wasn't planned, but it worked perfectly. And we're just gonna roll with it. That looks awesome. Yes, it does. Move this over. Get our Nutella in there. Oh, yeah. Jay Frick. Six months in a row. Thank you for the six month resub. How are you doing today? Tilapia is cheap. I ate a lot of tilapia at one point as well, but I just don't really love the flavor of it. What are these? This is our tower of donuts that we are now gonna drizzle with a Nutella cream to celebrate World Nutella Day today. Oh, you're just watching at work, nice. I appreciate that. Risking it for the biscuit. Yes, Cheribu. It's been forever. You're actually off work at a reasonable time. And you think of coming in here to spend your time with me? That's amazing. Thank you so much. I don't have any beer craft yet, but I think we might get into maybe some beer or tequila when we get into our tacos. Okay, guys, we are going in for the epic drizzle of this Nutella cream. Nike, I know you're in here. I think you probably want to clip this. Just keep going. So look at the consistency of that. It's pretty perfect. It just kind of covers the donuts, but it's not just kind of falling off. Quite a nice glaze. Literally just Nutella and whipping cream, guys. <laughs> I can't stop. I can't stop drizzling. It's too much fun. Okay, okay, I'll stop, guys. This is, this is fudged up. <laughs> and Sammy gets it all. This would be a party favorite. Honestly, every time we made this at work, after brunch service, using up the old pancake batter, the kids would love it. Be like, it's donut time. Everyone would be like, yes. Okay, so now here's my favorite part. We gotta do this pretty quickly. So our Nutella already kind of hardened up a touch. Just sprinkle that with some of our toasted coconut flakes. Get that little bit of nuttiness, some extra crunch oh, as well. Yeah. We're looking good. Chef de partie with the seven month resub. Thank you so much, Robin, for all of your support. I love that you're a fellow Canadian. Nice new camera. And yeah. Nice new cans, man. Moving on up in the world. I love to see that. Reinvesting in your stream, great way to get ahead. 
<laughs> what? What? Okay, I'm gonna take a quick photo. How does this look though, guys? Can we get closer up? <laughs> Insanity. Getting baked with Kate. This was a quick one. This really didn't take too long to prepare. dinner. I'm not even sorry about it, Annie. Yeah, desert. Desert clip. Thank you for clipping that, Nike. Okay, we're going in. Starting from the top down. Woo! She's gooey still. She's gooey. Look at that fluff. That's a proper donut hole. Still steamy inside. Like maybe I can pop the whole thing in? Let's try. These were supposed to be bite sized. They might be a two bite for me. Definitely a one bite for Sammy. Yeah, go crazy. want to make crispy donuts. The outside is pretty crispy still. Mm. Moss. I just leave them longer. So yeah, you could just, I wouldn't raise the oil temp too much. Just leave them in a little bit longer, but they will get darker. Also make them smaller. That's true. Yeah. Make them smaller and then you'll have more surface area for your whole recipe. Then you'll have more crunch. Sammy eat all the donuts so that Nike can have the tacos. I don't know if that's a fair trade-off, Nike. Two at once. <laughs> yes. Inject to the cream filling, Annie. We should have made a Nutella cream. But the milk, though, is pretty perfect with it. Oh, man. I think I definitely need some water. It's not overly sweet, though, I have to say. They had something similar at Papa John's. They charged five bucks for ten of those, and they were much smaller. Huge ripoff. They were cinnamon. I don't even know if this whole recipe costs five dollars to make. Maybe with the labor involved? But we made 24 donuts for that price. <laughs> Nike. <laughs> okay, Nike. This is the last week to get those Super Bowl jokes out. I'll let you ride the train for the rest of the week, man. <laughs> you even gave yourself a week. You're like, this is my limit. <laughs> yeah, 
It's okay, you don't have to eat them all. If only we had some cool neighbors that didn't turn down free food when I offered it to them. Yeah. Sure. Thank you. Ah, okay. Good planning, Nike. Yeah, you let everyone else talk the week before, and then you can have a free-for-all the week after. Is that hazelnut? Oh, Nuris, how are you? Yeah, this is a true story, guys. Is in the summertime here where we live in our area, we do a huge garage sale of all of the houses in the entire subdivision. I think there's like over 700 houses or something. So huge garage sale day. I did a bake sale as well with our garage sale. So I had cookies that I made, three different types. Offered it to our neighbors on each side, like neighbors on the one side have three younger kids. One of the kids I think is maybe in his late teens and the rest are younger. It's like, you guys want some cookies? You don't have to pay for them. And they're like, no, we're good. It's like, what? Why? What's wrong with you? Yeah, move next door with force. Come on in guys. Yeah, stranger danger. I guess I'm a scary person. Yeah, kids these days, right? I'm surprised they didn't ask if it was vegan or gluten-free. Okay, I'm gonna have one more of these. And then it's Taco Tuesday time. I'm gonna do the whole thing. I'm gonna go all in. Yeah, that's basically how my mouth's gonna look, I shot. cookies yes yes didn't seem to stop sammy nope yeah moss the onion emote with the mouth wide open the nom the nom onion yeah they were waiting for me to offer them the weed cookies imagine The Nomian. The Nomian. That's the new kind of onion. Okay. Let me pull up our tortilla recipe. And no surprise here, but I am using serious eats recipe do, 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 do. let me see how if it says how many we get I don't think it does though so two cups of masa and one and a quarter cups of water. Here we go guys, posting in chat for you guys.
they reorganized all the emotes? Oh yeah, the frequently used. Isn't that the greatest? You don't have to keep scrolling through. Nixtamalized. So what that means, owners, that is the process that they use on the corn to get it into the masa form. We're gonna get into that right now though. Quick switch of my title now that we're done with the Nutella stuff. And let's go to Mexico. Let's go there. Five, four, three, two, one. What is this? Palsh, my boy Palsh, fellow Canadian. Thank you for the raid and the host, my good sir. How are you all today? Miss Molly, dead cosmonauts, werewolf, DJ physics. <laughs> I don't have a taco emote. How is the stream, Pulse? Okay, we just finished celebrating World Nutella Day. We quickly made some donuts out of pancake batter. Life hack there. We made a Nutella cream just by mixing a little bit of our Nutella with some whipping cream, heated it up until it's nice and smooth. And we just garnished with some toasted coconut flakes. It was a tower of donuts, but we have eaten a couple in the last few minutes. You're doing music again tonight. Hands are, soy and hands are sore and the voice is shot, so it was fun as hell. Amazing. I didn't know you were doing that. Congrats, dude. Yeah, oh, Canada. Okay, so switching over from World Nutella Day to Taco Tuesday, we might involve a little bit of tequila in the mix if things go well. I just posted in chat the easy way to make fresh corn tortillas at home. This is a recipe from Serious Eats. And so Onuris was just asking, what does nixtamalization mean? That's a pretty weird word, isn't it? Nixtamalized. And that is what happens for us to get masa, what we use to make the corn tortillas. <laughs> it's 8.30 a.m. and now you want donuts for breakfast. Miss Molly, sorry, not sorry. You should have donuts for breakfast. I mean, it's just deep fried pancakes. You can dress them different like this. Make a berry sauce, go with some whipped cream maybe. Or you could even go savory. Dip that into some oh, cheese yeah. or something. The list goes on. Nutella tequila? I don't know, Manuris. Thank you for the follows, guys. DJ Physics, welcome in. As well as Princess Sarah. Welcome to the squad, guys. Blitz Brom, you would die for a kitchen this size. It is very spacious, I have to say. This is like, our floor plan is really, really open. And yeah, there is a lot of space for me between like the stove and the island. It's great to work in, I have to say. And that's like a key part of when we are looking for places to live is like it has to have a workable kitchen for two chefs. Norge's store with the six month in a row resub. Thank you so much, man. How are you doing today? Six months. We have had one, two, three, four, five, six, Six, seven resubs today, guys. Our highest resub of the day today, 11 months in a row. So we're working up to our one year resubs. And a little note on that, 
is Twitch has come out with a VIP program now. So the fairest way for me to reward or come up with my VIPs is the first 50 people that do 12 month resubs are gonna be VIPs to the Onion Squad. You like food DJ physics, I do as well. I wish I had my own island, Onuris. Okay, so nixtamalization, masa. Let's get into our tacos. So this process involves cooking and soaking dried corn kernels with calcium hydroxide, which is also lime. So if you've heard the, li the word lime, soaked in lime, cooked in lime, it's an alkaline which removes much of the grain's bran, significantly increasing the, the availability of niacin in the corn. And that actually helps to deliver more nutritional benefits to the masa. So instead of, let's say, how wheat is refined, it strips, it strips the wheat of all of that good stuff, is the nixtamalization process actually makes the corn more healthy for us when we eat the tacos. So it's also a good thing gastronomically because the nixtamalization process changes the flavor of the corn. By removing the bran, it makes it much easier to grind and form the corn into a dough, especially in ancient times because this was all done by hand. We're gonna do it by hand today just to see how tough it is. And I will say this is not my first time making corn tortillas at home. So maybe I will work a little bit faster than you guys if you're trying it out for the first time, but it's really not that difficult. So the result from this nixtamalization process, so the corn is cooked in a lime mixture, obviously dried and then ground up into this fine mixture. We get a corn dough. It's responsible for much of the Mexican food we love today from tacos to tamales, quesadillas, sopes, gorditas, and atoles. Oh yeah. <laughs> and another one. Anonymous Gifter gave Pulse 109 a tier one sub. Thank you for that. Pulse just subscribed for eight months in a row. You anonymous person. Thank you for gifting Pulse that sub. And obviously eight months, Pulch is a key member. Yeah, Annie, 11, or Limping Lemon, 11 months, hey? She's gotta be up there. Lie, yeah. Lie, lime. Oh, yeah. Gorditas. Hey, Do I have gorgeous? recipes on here? So this is what I'm reading off of. This is not my own recipe, but I will post this for you. Heat man. Tamales are actually really fun to make, Onuris. I've done them on stream once, and actually my viewers helped me make the tamales because it was my first time. But I did have a lot of viewers with a Mexican background that really helped me through it. It was a really fun stream. Monastash! Subscribe for three months in a row. Thank you so much, Monastash. This was a donut Nutella tower that we've kind of eaten halfway through. And we're just getting through some tortilla and masa info before we start our Taco Tuesday fiesta. I do have a tortilla press. That is something I ordered off of Amazon. It is cast iron, and I believe it was only around $20 to get it delivered. Thank you for posting that clip, Nike. Okay, so obviously I did not make the masa. So 
So we need two cups of masa. And this says it's gonna make 12 six inch tortillas. I usually make more close to four inch diameter tortillas. So we'll get more than 12. And I think that's, that's a proper amount for just two of us. We'll probably get closer to 16 small tortillas. That, that's enough fish tacos for sure. So two cups of this masa harina. Say goodbye to our wonderful Nutella donuts. Happy World Nutella Day, guys. Thanks for participating in that with us. So this is the brand of masa I use. Very, very inexpensive ingredient, by the way, is I have made, I've made tamales out of this bag already. I think I've made tacos three times as well from just this one bag and we're only about halfway through it. And we are doing this by hand. You're thinking of a spiralizer polish. You have some sweet potato spiralized noodles in the fridge and not sure what you want to do with them yet. Ooh. Maybe treat it as like a pasta. Oh, really, Monastache? So my trick for those donuts I just made is actually using the same recipe for pancakes that I shared with you guys. Diabetes day. Thank you, Norges. I say that all the time. It sounds like you can't just say diabetes for everything that has mass amounts of sugar. And I was like, sure I can. <laughs> Why can't I? Diabetes. Where can you buy this at? So this is actually pretty popular. I got it from not even really a specialized grocer. And obviously this is gonna be more in like the international foods aisle or the Mexican food aisle, maybe buy your old El Paso kits or salsas. <laughs> Yummy beatus. Okay, so let's get started. We need two cups of this, one and a quarter cups of, I'm gonna say warm water. I found better results by using warm water. And we obviously need a pretty big bowl here for this. We'll use boy blue, blue bowl. And then for all you newbies that just came in, I do have a Discord channel. Which I just posted in chat. We do have a lot of recipes there from the stream. You have no Mexicans in Norway. So you can't find this then, Norges, hey? I can't find this at all grocery stores here. But I did find it at one. I still have to drive about 30 minutes, 35 minutes just to find this though. All of the stores in town do not carry this. Yeah, you maybe have Spanish food. That's true, Polsh. And obviously, as we can read here at the top, gluten free. That's a bonus for any of you that are allergic to wheat. 100% maize. So one and a quarter cups of warm water. Cooks for gluten-free wife. She's celiac. Well, there you go, Onuris. Tamales, tortillas. The list goes on. So 
go. One cup. Ah ha ha. One quarter cup. That is that. Now we're gonna get messy. <laughs> we better call the police. So I always just kind of go around and around in a circle. Kind of like making pasta dough, I guess. And yes, this is going to be dry when you first kind of mix it. And here's the thing. So kind of just how you rest a pasta dough after you make it, we need to rest our masa dough for minimum half an hour, but I find the best results are 45 minutes. Corn takes 45 minutes to fully absorb the liquid compared to like a regular all-purpose flour only takes about 15 minutes to absorb that liquid. So if we don't let our masa dough rest long enough, is that's how we get really dry tortillas that crack on us. So we need to take that time and let it rest and absorb that liquid. So we get nice, perfect tortillas. <laughs> Rook, did I just hear a Sesame Street count? You might have. The Novel Kitchen, welcome in. Thanks for the follow. I'm throwing masa everywhere currently. Masa dough, quite a fun thing to say, isn't it, Paul? Oh gosh, making a mess. <laughs> Gorgeous. Your love hate for this channel, man, hilarious. Cravings for tacos, 1.45 in the morning. I'm sorry, man. I'm sorry. Okay, we're getting there. Our bowl's getting dry. Just kind of pressing this all together. And another thing is if you don't knead this enough. So you kind of knead it like a bread dough or a pasta dough. Form it into a nice ball. I think that's the best we're gonna do. You can kind of tell it's like cracking. It doesn't want to form into a really nice ball. But all we're gonna do now is we obviously don't want this to dry out. So I'm gonna wrap it in a plastic wrap and then I'm gonna set a 45 minute timer so we don't forget about it and let it rest out. And then we can start to prep the fish. We can make our creamy salsa verde and shred our cabbage and radish while we're waiting for this. And then we'll have to press these out. You guys will get to see how a tortilla press works. And then we're going to cook them in a cast iron pan on the stove top. That's the closest thing we have to a griddle. So I'm just gonna leave that in there, I think. 45 minute timer. Wash up my hands. And then when we come back to this rested masa dough is it should feel a lot more soft as well. It should be more pliable, not as crumbly. Oh, thanks, Nike. Yeah, I'm wearing my um, sugar skull tights. So keeping with the Mexican theme.
Okay. So, creamy salsa verde. If you guys don't know, salsa verde is a typical salsa used in Mexico. The base ingredients for it. Let's start to get all of our Mexican ingredients out. We'll start to put it all on the tray. First one, the must for a salsa verde, tomatillos, guys. Do you know what this is? Some of you might say, wow, that sounds and kind of looks like a tomato. Limes. Jalapeno. Beer battered fish, fries, sour cream, and raw onions. That's heaven for you, Norges. Yeah, tomatillo. Tomo tio. Got some sweet baby peppers. Not sure if they're bell peppers or not, but they're delicious. Those might be the ones that I get from Costco a lot, and they're so good. Hey, Polish, this cilantro, pretty good looking, I would say. A lot of green stuff on this tray. And I have to say, as far as like fresh produce goes, Mexico has some of the best, especially varieties wise. They grow a lot of great stuff in Mexico. And for our creamy salsa verde, a couple of avocados. Pacific Red Snapper is what I'm using. Another thing, we talked about this earlier, you guys can use tilapia, cod, rockfish, any kind of mild white fish that is quite firm when it cooks up. You don't want anything too flaky, it could fall apart. Yeah, build the wall of flavor, please, Cherubu. <laughs> You haven't seen tomatillos in person there. Wow, Polsh. So tomatillos, not actually part of a tomato family. It's related to a gooseberry. So if you guys have ever seen a gooseberry, those are those small little orange berries in a husk similar to this. And so we gotta peel this husk off. I usually wash them. And that is for our salsa verde. We also need some garlic as well as a touch of onion, just a little bit. There's our head of garlic. I'm gonna go grab that onion, guys. I'll be right back. You can't think of any goose jokes. <laughs> yeah, come on. You guys sleeping? Are we talking about peppers? Mm, I wasn't planning on it, Monastash, but we totally can. I was gonna give us a little bit of taco history before we started, because it is actually pretty interesting. Yeah, exactly, Paul. Gotta grab that onion.
Okay, we're good. So there's our tray of ingredients. Pretty simple. <laughs> yes, you guys. Thank you for that. That's a good looking chat. The one onion to rule them all. And really quickly, so this isn't actually the proper onion that I should be using. Mexican and Spanish cuisine, they use white onions. They are more mild and actually more sweet. So that's why you usually find them chopped up raw as a garnish on a lot of stuff because it's not that huge, like punch you in the face, yellow onion flavor. So a white onion is the proper onion to use. Sadly, this is a sweet onion. So yeah, this is a Vidalia. So it's gonna be sweet, but it's just not going to be the same still. The yellow onion is used in a lot of Spanish meals. Okay, so maybe it is just more Mexican. Mexican cuisine, white onions. It's a good looking tray, guys. And we are going to use the blender today to make our salsa verde, but some of these ingredients will actually be heated up first to make the base. And this is a little trick that I learned when I worked in a taqueria in Edmonton. I helped one of my mentors open a taqueria. For sure, one of, still one of my favorite places I've ever worked. And at the time when we opened it is, it got one of the top restaurants in Canada. So there's the link for that if you guys wanna check it out. Very, very authentic tacos. Definitely a learning experience for me. And it helped me fall in love with Mexican cuisine, for sure. Trace Carnales. Okay, we're gonna stay with the Mexican theme today. We're keeping colorful. Maybe that's like one of my favorite things about Mexico as well is everything is so nice and colorful. Hodrific, are you serious? You've eaten at Trey Carnales? I worked there, I think 2011 to 2012. So that was one of my first places I worked when I started cooking. So long ago. <laughs> wow. Okay, so first things first, our tomatillo, we're gonna peel the skin off. As you can see, there's usually a little bit of gunk under there. So I always like to give it a good rinse under hot water. Wash that stuff off. Bloom and onion. Have I seen that? Heck yes, I have. Have I eaten it at Outback? Yes, I have. I shot long time ago. Still counts though. It's, it's tasty. I will say that it's basically like a big old onion ring. Do you want me to make a bloom and onion on stream? Here's the only thing though I shot. It's like, unless, yeah, unless my parents are here, Sammy doesn't want that. He won't eat it because he doesn't really like onions too much. I know, sad times. You ate a lot of tacos and tortas. Oh, the chorizo torta, hojerific. Oh my gosh. Seriously, life changing. When they fry the cheese onto the bun, Changed my life forever. You guys are shocked at Sammy. Like he eats cooked onions, but when it's like the star of the dish, not really his thing. Onions and celery. That's where he draws the line, guys. Okay, so whole tomatillos into our little sauce pot. Chorizo, yeah, and we actually made it by hand. So fresh ground pork and a bunch of Mexican spices mixed in. Oh man, chop that up on the grill. So good. Hojerific, so basically these fish tacos 
are an homage to Trey Carnale's fish tacos. And it's one of Sammy and I's favorite things to eat. Obviously, we can't go there as often anymore, so might as well just make it myself. Yeah, this far, no further. <laughs> Next ingredient for our salsa verde, jalapeno. You need a little bit of spice. This is more of a mild spicy pepper. And if you want it quite mild, is cut this in half and take all the seeds out. And I think I might actually only use half of this anyways, but we're gonna leave the seeds and the ribs in. So that's where all of our spice comes from. I don't wanna use the whole thing because I think that'll be too spicy for the small amount that we're making today. If you wanna get some pork belly and make some curry worst, you use pork belly to make that, Marges? That's insanity. I'm gonna do two two good sized garlic cloves and we're gonna blend this stuff which is why we don't have to cut it down too far you actually want to keep it whole and obviously that'll save us time initially too right and next thing some of our onion once again i'm only going to use half of this if we use the whole thing, it's just going to be too overpowering. It was a favorite pre-concert meal. Yes, exactly, Hojerific. We actually had quite a few celebrities come in after their concerts. Pretty rock in place all the time. Very fun to work at as well. You're peeping the Google images. Seriously, great, great food. If I ever moved back to Alberta, that's where I would work, if you guys wanna know. So our onion is the only thing that we're gonna cut down a touch, but keep it pretty big chunks still. We're gonna add a little bit of water into this pot. So we're gonna boil these things a touch. And what that's gonna do, that's gonna soften up our tomatillos, our onions, our garlic, and our jalapeno. And then give us the liquid we need that's going to be seasoned already with this flavor to make the salsa verde when we blend it. Otherwise, it would be too thick, right? If you're gonna add water, make sure that it's already flavored with all of the ingredients you're using. For this amount, I might actually just cut these tomatillos a touch. Usually I only add enough water to just cover everything. I don't want to dilute it too much. This is actually one of the smallest amounts of salsa verde I've ever made. So we'll just do that. And I think we'll get a better result. He's looked a little bit sad. It had to go, guys. Okay, there we go. Now over to the stove top. I'm gonna put this on medium high heat. We're just gonna bring it up to a boil or a simmer and then turn it off. And that's all that needs. You like this meme, Annie. When you wish upon a star, you're a few million light years late. That star is dead already, just like your dreams. Oh, wow. The Tomatillos made your Twitch app crash. No. Hey guys, quick peep of our stove top currently. So deep fryer that we're gonna use for our fish later on. Turn our salsa verde pot medium high. Shouldn't take too, too long to come up. 
<laughs> it's true, though, Annie. It's true. While we're waiting, the other two things that we're going to need to add to the blender are cilantro and our avocado. Yeah, dark, like the best kind of matter. Oh God, can't get into the cilantro. Let me in. And best part here, guys, the cilantro not looking the best, but we can use the leaves and the stem. <laughs> You're gonna have to pick through this just a touch. Cilantro is one of the hardest herbs to keep in the fridge without it going bad. I'm gonna take a bunch like that. I'm just gonna rinse this stuff. It's a little poopy, I'm not gonna lie. It's seen better days. Drop that right in there. We will need a little bit more later to chop up for a garnish, so I'm just gonna leave that out. You'll be lurking, Polish. Sounds good, man. Thank you for the raid one more time. You the best. Growing cilantro, it is actually quite easy, but it wants to bolt to seed super quick. So it's still kind of a pain in the butt to grow, but it does like its heat for sure. Homegrown fungi. Yeah, you do got to keep an eye on it. Totally. Is there any way to tell if the radishes will be bitter before you buy them? Not, not that I know of vegan gelato, unless you sneakily pop one in your mouth and eat it. <laughs> Good call on the plant nerd knowing, yeah. It's gonna bolt. People are like, what are you talking about? What are you talking about? Okay, avocado. I'm gonna estimate that we need one whole avocado to make our creamy salsa verde. And we can get into that right now. I don't think it's gonna take very long to bring our salsa verde ingredients up to that simmer. That's a good looking avo. No brown spots. Nice and ripe. Scoop that right into our blender. Yeah, I try to avoid anyone bolting from this channel. I hope I don't make anyone bolt from the channel. It'd be sad. But I guess that's just a fact of life. Scare some people away. No brown spots in the avo. What is this, Norges? Is this even an avo? You mean it's not half rotten when you cut into it? What is life? The last thing we'll need for this mixture is just some salt to bring it all together. Definitely will need some seasoning. Just that one time when you made edibles on stream. <laughs> That's true, Annie. But I didn't scare them away. 
the people that said they didn't want to participate, they did come back, which I'm very impressed by, actually. Thanks for not giving up on me, guys. Um, this AVO, this sticker, Produce of Mexico. You have Mexican and Dominican. We have California and Mexican. The Dominican avos are bigger? Whoa. Okay, real quick. It looks like we're just starting to simmer on our salsa verde ingredients. They're the size of small melons. What? Is the pit really big in them? I shot. Like, is the size wasted on the pit that you just throw out anyways? Or is there lots of flesh inside still? Okay, while we wait, I think we're going to quickly just portion our fish. I'm gonna give that a couple more minutes on the stove top there. So we have 300 grams of fresh Pacific red snapper. This cost 387. So a dollar 29 per 100 grams. Quite an inexpensive fish. The most amazing avocado you tasted came from a small avocado. Wow. I can't even imagine Indog. I really, really want to go back to like traditional Mexico and experience the food that way. It's definitely not the same when you do like all inclusive. Avos for 77 cents, Nike. We are lucky if we get two avos for $3 here. She's a little bit pricey. literally like butter it was from a co-worker's tree wow the fact that they took the time to grow that tree and wait how many years is it again before the tree actually produces fruit isn't it something like five years that they have to wait seven to eight years that's love to me, that is like true commitment. No wonder it tasted amazing. The big Dominican avos are two for four. Four bucks for two there, Norges. <laughs> Guys, I love when we compare prices like this. To me, this stuff's fascinating, being a chef. Like, I like to know how much food costs in other areas of the world. Okay, so portioning this snapper for our little pieces of deep fried fish. So one thing I always do when I portion fish, run your hand over these lines in the fish because sometimes there's bones. So I feel some bones along this one. And I think our easiest thing to do here is I'm actually just gonna cut all along this bone line because that's kind of the size I want my portion of fish anyways. So we're gonna cut alongside the bones and just take them out that way. And that way we're not going to completely tear up our filet of fish. You can see here, I got one out, two out. Three, four, feel it one more time. We're good, we're clean. So I am gonna clean this piece up a touch. I think I'm just gonna cut this in half. You want to think about your tortilla. So the size of our tortilla is going to be anywhere between four to six inches. So 
So I wouldn't make your fish any longer than that. And as far as width for your fish, you don't want your piece of fried fish to take up the entire tortilla. So keep it nice and thin, and bite size. <laughs> yeah, you guys are all about commitment, be it fruit or relationships. Favorite overall fish? Hojerific, I would have to say it's a close one between salmon or black cod, aka sable fish. So I'm definitely like a fatty fish lover. Cod is nice as well, Norges. Cod is like super versatile. Okay, so this piece of fish, I'm gonna go right down the middle. And obviously when we look at this, so it gets really thin at the bottom part here. So these pieces are gonna cook a lot quicker than these thicker pieces up here. So this one, cut it like that. this one, because it's so thick, I'm going to cut it into three pieces. So there we go. Out of one fish fillet, we've got two, four, six, seven pieces. Really quick, just checking out the stove top, guys. So see how the tomatillos that are kind of submerged under water have started to turn color, go less vibrant green? That tells me that they have softened up. So that's gonna come off of the burner now. And we'll just let that cool down a touch while we finish this fish. And we want that liquid to cool down just a little bit because of the ingredients that we're blending it with. So cilantro and avocado, two nice green ingredients that if you put a lot of heat to them, they're gonna turn brown. So we don't want that to turn brown. We want our salsa verde which means green, to end up looking like a green salsa. We don't want it to go a gross brown color. Yeah, in dog black cod, pretty amazing. I agree. Okay, next piece. Ooh, ooh, what's this? I'm gonna trim that off. Whatever that is, some dark colored stuff. Eh. But I'm gonna keep this tray. Give me this. Halibut for you, Hojerific. That's a good choice as well. It's pricey, but it's worth it. For people who don't like fish, I think halibut's actually a great starting point because the flesh is so firm. It gets really meaty for a fish. Ooh, this one has quite a bit of bones in it, but I'm gonna start by taking off whatever this is. Kind of like a bloodline almost, it looks like. Clean that up, get rid of that. Flip the other side over. Okay, we're good. Get rid of this little piece of skin as well. Small halibuts are amazing. I agree. The bigger ones are a no, no, no. Because they have so many worms in them, Norges. Yeah, Chilean sea bass. Is there any meat I suggest rinsing? I would say you don't really have to rinse any meat. I shot if it's fresh, but like I've definitely smelt chicken before that is close to being bad and it has a funky smell. You could rinse it to try and save it, but you gotta be careful with that as well. Okay, so here is our line of bones. We got one, two, three, four, five, six in here that we're gonna cut out. So once again, follow this line, cut along each side of those bones. Okay, 
There's one. Pulled that one out. And now they're just all up here. Obviously try and stay as close to the bones as you can. You don't waste too much fish there. Divide this piece into two. We'll cut this in half. Make one slice, two slice. So we should have around 14 pieces of fish there. Around seven pieces each. Done and done. I'm just gonna spray my knife with some disinfectant. We have 12 minutes left on our timer for our masa dough to rest. So we're moving right along, guys. the fish at all today but if you want to get a little bit fancy with your flavoring go ahead and marinate the fish with something that pairs nicely with the rest of your ingredients maybe make like a garlic a spicy garlic and cilantro rub but i'm just going to keep it simple we're going to season it with salt and pepper before we batter it and fry it i don't want to season it too far ahead of time because it can make the fish too salty and it will also affect the texture of the fish is because the flesh of the fish is so delicate is that little bit of salt will actually start to almost cook it if you leave it for a while. You just pat down your steaks just to be sure they're not carrying any concealed weapons. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> okay, let's bring our saucepan, salsa verde ingredients over. That's what we're looking at now. Let's get a slotted spoon to start. So this is what I meant by the tomatillos kind of going more of a bland green color but they've softened up a touch so that's what we want we don't want to use raw tomatillos in our salsa verde and we're going to use all of these vegetable ingredients in our salsa verde including the onions and the garlic yeah whatever you do guys do not rinse the meat after you cook it So although this liquid doesn't look like there's flavor in it, we kind of steeped these ingredients, right? So we're gonna have a little bit of all of these flavors in this water. And now we're just gonna add enough water so that we can blend this into kind of a nice pourable consistency. I am not gonna put a Carolina Reaper in Nike because I don't have any. I'm sorry, dude. So just a little bit of water at a time. Play it safe. Don't want it too liquidy. I usually use about half and then top it up as we blend it. Do I ever cook with weed? I do, Emerald. I actually did my first Baked with Kate stream a couple weeks ago. We made cannabis infused salted chocolate chip cookies. It was really fun and we cooked out of the Bong Appetit cookbook. Put some tapaccio. What is that again, Thunderstruck? What's tapaccio again? So I'm not adding any seasoning at this point either. Ah, some sauce. 
Okay. Nor did you've tried Carolina Reaper. It was not fun. Step dancing first to pain. To eat ice cream made it worse. No. Tapacio is better than sriracha. Okay. It's a Mexican hot sauce. Okay, we're gonna go over to the blender. Obviously start on low heat or low speed, guys, not low heat. And then turn it up. That's what you use for a less hot sauce. I like Valentina's. Is that allowed? Or are you guys gonna hate me for saying that? Yeah, low heat blending. blend one more time after we season it but look at this color creamy salsa verde a beautiful bright green color cholula yeah that's the other one <laughs> sleep tight <laughs> yeah i've never even seen tapaccio hodorific maybe we don't have it up here in canada there's a black label valentina what is this Yes, Thunderstruck. Literally laughing my ass off at watching Ramsey on Hot Ones. You guys need to watch this. So, so good. It's half an hour long, but it will greatly improve your life. Hey, it's a little bit steamy in there still. Mixture's warm, obviously. I'm gonna scrape all this stuff out of the lid that popped up there while we were blending. Yeah, he takes, he literally chugs a bottle of Pepto. Okay, so salsa consistency. It's pourable, it's not too thick, not too watery. Pretty impressed with how this is looking. Let's give it a taste. See how much salt we need to put in. And flavorings that I'm looking for here should get a pretty good kick from the cilantro. Should be kind of like in your face. Definitely a little bit of heat from the jalapeno. The avocado is gonna cool it down a little bit because of its fat. And not too much flavor from the tomatillo, obviously, but you should get a nice a nice little punch from the onion and garlic as well, but that should kind of be on the back burner compared to the cilantro flavor. I need to be on hot ones. I would die. I would probably puke Thunderstruck. It would be so spicy for me. Or I wouldn't even be able to talk because I get hiccups when I eat spicy food. Yeah. I'd just be like, <gasps> Die from hiccups, is that a thing? Because that would probably happen. Okay, creamy salsa verde. I think we did pretty good. Not enough cilantro, but the consistency is right. We get a nice kind of sweet flavor from the onions. Nothing too sour from the tomatillos, which is why, how could I forget this? 
we add lime juice. So we're gonna balance this out now with some salt and lime. There's a reason that they serve that with tequila, salt and lime. Hot sauce shots. Yes, Rook, you need to go on hot ones. There's like a viable candidate. So rolling my lime on the cutting board, if you guys couldn't see that behind the blender, loosening up the juices in there. This is probably going to take the whole lime, but I'm going to start with half and go from there. It does need salt. It for sure needs salt. We haven't added any yet. So I'm going to start with a teaspoon of salt. We need a little bit more cilantro, so I'll just rinse a touch more of that and then throw in a handful. Two and a half minutes to go on resting our masa dough, and then we can start to make our tortillas. And maybe that'll be the point where the tequila has to come out, guys. Maybe. So, little handful more of cilantro. Teaspoon of salt to start. One more blend. And then we should probably be near Flavortown. Hope Sammy's wearing a sombrero. Actually, I have a really funny apron that my parents brought back from Mexico for me one year. It says, don't fuck with the cook. Never actually worn it for anything though. Okay, one more taste. This is what we're looking at, this goodness. Hopefully our seasoning is on point. Mmm. Definitely getting a good kick from the lime, but I think we'll need the other half. Not quite balanced yet. Just need more lime and more salt. I'm gonna put in another teaspoon of salt, guys. So two teaspoons of salt so far. It's actually kind of shocking how much salt you need when you're cooking with avocados, just because they're so fatty. How do my parents like Mexico? They love Mexico and they're actually there right now. They've been there for the last two days. They're going for two weeks to Puerto Vallarta this time. Okay, that's perfect. A little bit of sour notes back here, just kind of touching the back of your throat from the lime. Spice level is actually really mild. I think we totally could have gotten away with putting in that other half of jalapeno, but we still have the other half, so we could also use it for garnish. Just slice it thinly and put it on top of the taco. Yeah. Oh, they're for sure getting lit. My dad for sure, thunderstruck. He likes his drinks on the beach. We need that. We don't 
don't need these things. So watch as I pour this kind of the consistency that we want. So that when we put it onto our taco, it doesn't make the taco shell too soggy, but it's also not too thick that you can't disperse it evenly. So another sauce that should just kind of coat the back of a spoon. And this is actually a great all-purpose sauce. This would be great for eggs. I think in the morning as well. Kind of a Mexican style eggs with toast, some hot sauce, maybe some tomato. And that color is just my favorite. So that's going to go into the fridge. We'll let that start to cool off. Now it's tortilla time. Kind of the last couple of things we have left, we gotta shred up our cabbage still. So let's see. Kind of using up our ingredients here. So the only things we really need to prep left for the taco is our radish that we're gonna thinly slice and shred our cabbage for a little bit of crunch and freshness. Have I ever made sofrito? Yes, I shot both. This is actually something, a staple that I make at work on the weekly. I usually make it once or twice a week to put into a couple dishes. So I make it and put it into a grain risotto that we do. I use it to add some flavoring into a shellfish broth for steamed shellfish. We use it in pasta sauces as well. Really, really great kind of flavoring base for the winter time to add like a nice kind of sweetness and richness. You gotta redo Mexico and China someday. Bus tours are not the right way to see a country. I know, right? It's like, it always seems like that's the best way to do it, but honestly, you really just gotta take the risk and like do stuff on your own. Even though it can be scary and feel like it's unsafe, to me, you get like the most fulfilling experience. A bees, thank you for the follow. So actually, I think we should prep those vegetables before we get into the tortilla making. And then all we have to do is cook our tortillas. I can make the beer batter while we're cooking the tortillas or get Sammy to do it for us. And then we're pretty much there, guys. Welcome in, Cheese Pizza. How's the day? Mexico is so corrupt, so I hear. <laughs> This is honestly the cutest little green cabbage ever. Usually they're huge, like three times the size of this. Take our radishes off of the greens. These greens are looking pretty sad now. I shot both. Do you make sofrito at home? Or have you been wanting to make it? Is that why you asked? And for you, those of you who don't know, sofrito is used a lot in French and Spanish cuisine. Basically is onions cooked slowly in olive oil until they're kind of caramelized. This takes, usually the sofrito takes me about four to six hours to make properly. So this is like an all day thing on the stove top. A little bit of babysitting involved so you don't burn anything.
but like onions slowly caramelized in olive oil. Then you add in grated tomatoes or chopped up tomato, cook that out. And then I always fold in like really small chopped carrots at the end. Your mom makes it. The local bodega sells quartz of sofrito for four bucks. <laughs> I would suggest just buying it, honestly, because it costs way more than four dollars to make it. Just the amount of olive oil alone is worth more than four dollars. How often do I stir it? Oh gosh, probably like 20 times a day. You live in Argentina. Welcome in, Abyss. <laughs> what is going on right now? Okay, let's keep cleaning up these radishes. Guys, calm it down. Don't make Rook have to come in here. He's trying to work, didn't you know? Wrong chat indeed. I'm gonna give these a little rinse. They're not looking too hot. Fresh, fresh. Did I watch the Super Bowl? No, I didn't. I'm sorry. Do I know Milanese food? Like a fried cutlet? The music is spicy. I thought I'd keep it like nice and cozy in here. Roll along with the theme. slice it as thin as you can guys practicing a little bit of knife skills here for sure so we're gonna do nice little round slices so go nice and slow and controlled get something like that. This is used as a traditional garnish. 
for tacos or soups in Mexico. Not really radish season here right now. I can actually say though that these radishes, not super spicy. Actually really nice and mild. Man, it has good crunch. I'm just gonna keep eating the butt end. Doggo might come in for a snack. She hears the chopping. She's like, oh. Do I hear snacks being prepared? Yeah, radish on pozole. Oh man, Thunder. I've not actually made pozole on stream yet. I should really do that. One of my favorite soups. Doggo, you like radish? Keep her busy for a bit. What is this pizza day in NYC? So, cheese pizza. I know you haven't been around lately, but we are planning to do an IRL stream in New York. We are staying with one of my very loyal viewers for the last almost year. We're gonna be in New York from February 19th to 25th. Plan on streaming most of the trip. So pizza day in NYC is I'm planning on literally just going out one day while we're in New York and eating all of the best pizza. So basically that's for food money for that day. How much pizza can we eat in one day? We will find out. I think that's good on the radishes, guys. There's only two of us. We don't need a mass amount. Yes, cheese pizza. I'm actually planning on going to both of those. Do I know about food, Abiz? Yes, I do. I've been cooking for over eight years now. Oh, yeah. I like to think I know about food, oh, at least. Okay. Radish scraps for the doggo. Moving on to our cabbage. You know what's really good, Frog? Is roasted radishes. So good. So good. Cookery Nation with the three month resub, Twitch Prime. Hello to you, lovely lady. Welcome in. Thank you so much for your continued support. And also, thank you for the shout out in your newsletter. We actually have a couple of shout outs to do right now on stream, guys. If you don't know, Cheese Pizza, also a fellow food streamer. And if you can guess by his name, he makes pizzas. He actually does wood fired, he does it right. My favorite way to eat pizza as well. Go check them out. As well as Cookery Nation, who just came in with the resub. Go check out Cookery Nation, a fellow Canadian food streamer. One of the first people that I found on Twitch when I started over a year ago. Check her out. She also has been making this amazing newsletter once a month, kind of going over what's happening in the food and drink community on Twitch. It's pretty amazing. So go give those two some follows and hopefully you can catch one of their streams. Okay, cabbage, I'm just gonna peel off this first layer. We'll pretend like that piece that always gets soggy is like its suit of armor. It's kept it safe until we needed to use it. I can discard that now. I'm gonna go in half with this little guy. Cabbage has a core in the center there. So I always like to just cut along each side of the core and then take that out. Yeah, a Canadian, eh? Asado? Pollo asado? Is that what you're asking right now? 
There goes the core. That's a really, really hard piece. It doesn't break down. It's not super tasty. Doggos love it. At least mine does. So that's what I usually do with that. Now, flip it onto the flat side. That's gonna make it a lot easier to cut. And we're just gonna cut that in half. Coming in with a really handy food preparation item, a mandolin. Wipe this off. And I have the Julienne attachment here. So if you can see those little teeth there, so I'm gonna get really nice thin strips of cabbage, really delicate. We don't want thick pieces, because that's gonna be overwhelming to our palate. It's gonna be really hard to bite through that in the taco without the tortilla falling apart. Cheese, not cheese, cheese. So smallest setting that you can set it at. Let's try this out. See what we get. So slide that along. I don't know why we didn't get strips. Let's try this again. <laughs> okay, we're getting um, little cubes of cabbage. I might actually just switch to my knife for this. This is giving me hassle. But usually you get really nice thin strips of cabbage. Okay. Playing it cool, I'm gonna switch to this side and we're just gonna make really, really thin cuts with our knife. So once again, go slow if you need to. You wanna go as thin as you can. So like your knife might wanna slip as you're cutting because you're trying to go super thin, but that's exactly what we want. So like almost paper thin, let's say. So that like you get a little bit of crunch. Yeah, no strips. That is not making sense to me cookery, so. I've done this a million times with the mandolin. It must just be the way that the cabbage leaves are formed. I feel cabbage is better for tacos instead of lettuce. I do. I think it holds up better. And I like the sweetness as well. Okay, that's where I'm gonna stop because it's just getting too hard to cut it properly. I'll do a little bit more of this side, but we don't need too, too much more. Once again, there's only two of us having tacos today. Yes, I shot. You totally should. Red cabbage is really good as well. But yeah, that's my only pointer is making sure that you can slice your cabbage really oh, nice and thin yeah. like this. Holy! Om Dog the Chef gifting five tier one subs to the community. Oh, yeah. Welcome in, guys. Oh, yeah. And actually, here's where we can start to make our taco platter. So I'm going to use oh, this big wooden yeah. board to present everything. So I'll just pile up our cabbage. Oh, yeah. In one part of it. That's probably enough. So the rest of that, I'll just pack up. Day 
dreamer. You lost them all. No! Frog leg, welcome in. New subs. Welcome to the Onion Squad, guys. Okay, let's put this stuff aside. Put some of our radishes on here as well now. Make a little pile beside the cabbage. I think I'll go on this side, though. want tacos now. Go get them. Or, better yet, make them yourself. That's why I'm here. Teach you guys the good stuff. Okay. Moving right along. It is tortilla time. Tortilla and Tequila time. Is this a thing, guys? Tortilla and tequila time. We'll just keep rolling with the alliteration. Tacos, tortillas, and tequila. Gotcha, pen. Welcome. So, tortilla press. I know you can get wooden ones. This one's cast iron. It is heavy. The brand is Victoria. And like I said earlier, if you were in chat, I got this off of Amazon for I think about $20. So really not expensive at all. And this is gonna last your whole lifetime if you take care of it. Obviously you can tell I've used it before. This is the key to using a tortilla press at home is cutting open a Ziploc bag. So you just cut along each side and then that's gonna help your tortillas not stick to the press. But first, <laughs> Sammy's just going in. Okay. Um, anyone else? Cheers, chat. Anyone else feeling like they wanna do a tequila shot with us? Yeah. Let's see the bottle again, please. This is what we're drinking. So my parents have gone to Mexico quite a few years. That's where they like to spend their time on vacation. So this is the bottle of tequila that they brought back for us last time. Aja Toro. Don't know if that's gonna focus. 40% alcohol, 80 proof. It's the good stuff. It's for sure the good stuff. It's a tequila that doesn't really make me wince when I take the shot of it and I don't need the salt or the lime. It's really nice and smooth. So cheers guys to a wonderful week and to Taco Tuesday. Can't be a Mexican themed stream without at least one shot of tequila. We're not getting wasty, but we're allowed to enjoy alcohol in small amounts. <laughs> yeah, toast to me with your back meds. Thanks, cookery. At least you got something going on over there. By the way, how is your back? Are you doing okay? It's nice. Still have to drink water after, but it's one of the best tequilas I've ever had. Okay, so masa time. Work it into our tortillas. I feel all warm and toasty inside now. So we have to divide this. The recipe said, what? It originally made 12, 12 six inch tortillas. And I said I usually make four inch tortillas, so the smaller ones. So I'm thinking we'll get more closer to like 16 pieces. Still looks a little bit dry in my mind. We let this rest the 45 minutes, but if I work it a little bit, 
it could hold together. Otherwise, I might actually just add a touch of water now. I know this is like totally against the rules, but I have seen some recipes where it does depend on the humidity of how much water you need in your dough. You've done it. Okay, phew, cookery. I mean, I followed that recipe before when I've made these in the summer, no problem. But maybe now that it's really cold out here, humidity has changed, right? We're gonna need more liquid to soften this up. That's why I kept the bowl out. And with Cookery Nation's assurance that she's done this before and nothing crazy happened, I feel okay. So we'll add maybe a tablespoon of water at a time. But look at how crumbly this is still. Usually, if you did this with the rested dough, it wouldn't crumble apart like that. Thank you for that cookery. I really appreciate that. Just a little drizzle. So I think a little bit will go a long way here. It's close, but it's not quite there. That's feeling better already. Now let's see. Because you should be able to roll it in a ball without it crumbling too much. I think that's better. Staying together. Try one more piece from a different area. Yep, we're good. So I maybe added a tablespoon and a half of water extra to that. That's just one of those things that you're gonna get to know with how it feels, right? The feel and the look of it takes time to learn how to do this stuff properly. Best part I think about cooking these days is there's so many free resources online. If you're able to follow steps written out, you should be able to cook pretty much anything nowadays, especially with the YouTube videos as well and all of us cooking streamers. Okay, so we're gonna divide this now. I'm gonna try and go with maybe 16 balls we'll see what we get kind of an average size that i look for something like that maybe a tablespoon and a half the touch the feel of the masa the flower of our lives you obviously want all of your balls to be Consistent in size. Consistent balls, please, guys. That one looks a little big compared to the first one. I mean, Nike, I'm definitely one of those people that buys cookbooks still. I don't know whether it's like the smell or the feel of them, but there's something about like paper cookbooks that still is my favorite thing ever. Yeah, I have an addiction cookery, not afraid to say it. I've actually run out of room in my bookcase, so my addiction has been shut down currently. Stifled. It's stifled. Yeah, a little game show theme. <laughs> You're talking calling him up on the rotary phone and ordering over it? the credit card number okay Nike yeah that's true 
I mean, I don't even think I remember that from back then. I might be too young. But I get ya. Is that how they advertised cookbooks way back in the day? It's just like had these infomercials? Because I guess without internet, it's like all you had was either the TV or the newspaper to market yourself. Yeah, we can watch videos for free now. Exactly. Book clubs too. Okay, that's right, cookery. That's right. And I guess maybe the library would do like a coming soon thing at the front. I remember that when I was younger. I was a really big reader when I was young. Probably why I love cookbooks so much now. Especially the cookbooks with pictures. Let's be honest. Okay, where are we at? We're at 12. 12 tortillas. I feel like I have a bathroom break coming on pretty soon as well. Probably before we start to smash out these tortillas. I think 16 is the number. Yeah, the tequila, breaking the seal already. I did have a coffee earlier today as well. I was doing really well. I mean, three hours without a bathroom break? That's impressive for a cook with Kate stream. I'm gonna take a little bit of dough from this guy just cause it does look a touch too big and this one's a touch too small. 16. That's what we ended up with, guys. Great guesstimation. We are I'm gonna quickly cover these just with a tea towel so they don't dry out too much. I will be back in about 30 seconds. Okay, guys, let's do this. Oh, Nike, it's almost bedtime. Take care, man. Thanks for hanging out with us. Gotta ask the library system to get the Under Pressure, Thomas Keller sous vide book. It's a really nice book, vegan gelato. So first things first, before we even start, to make our tortillas or press them is we need to turn on our pan for cooking them. And in my experience, you need a pretty hot pan. So I can go with like a medium high heat. And what I'm using, just quickly looking at the stovetop, is this heavy duty cast iron pan that's gonna hold the heat properly. 
Usually tortillas are cooked a la plancha, is the word that they use in Mexico, so on a flat top grill. So same, same kind of with the cast iron pan. That's probably the closest thing you'll get to at home. Okay, back over here. I'm gonna kind of move these over. Roll those balls over. Yeah, I purchased like a bunch of cast iron a couple years ago. Definitely was an investment. And one thing I can say is don't buy it full price. Everything goes on sale, guys. And to buy a cast iron full price, honestly, you waste the money. Watch the sales, wait for the pan that you want, and then buy it. And once again, cast iron pan should pretty much last, last you your lifetime. So we're opening up our press, taking out one tortilla. We're gonna close up our plastic, close this, and then we flip the handle down and press. Obviously the harder you press, the thinner your tortilla. Estate sales, garage sales, antique shops, exactly cookery. Definitely need more. Oh yeah. So four inch tortilla. It didn't really crack too much on the edges. It's really nice and thin and you should be able to peel it off without it sticking. Obviously the flatter you can get it, the more pliable it will be when it's cooked. Pretty simple. Now we only have 15 more to go. Yeah, this is a little corn chip. We're making little like bite-sized popper tacos. While our pan heats up, I'm just gonna layer these on a plate and then we can just literally do like rapid fire tortilla cooking. That pan's gonna take probably five-ish minutes to heat up. So we might as well just keep making tortillas. What's up, Chris Christmas Rodriguez? You got a chain mail cloth for cleaning the pans. Cool. That's really cool cookery. I've never thought of that. My little kind of saver when it comes to cleaning the cast iron pans is just this little scraper that I got from Lodge. It works so well to just like scrape anything off. Hey Kev, how's school going, man? Thanks for stopping by and saying hey. The whole seasoning process. Yeah, you have to be pretty diligent with it, I shot. If your pan has rust, yeah, you could easily wash the rust off and then make sure you dry it right away. Leaving the water on there is gonna make it rust, right? So dry your pan and then go right ahead and season it. I'm gonna go a touch more. It's too much work, but it's not. It's so not. It's not hard when you get it there. Kev, it's been really tough, but you're getting through it. Just push through it, man. Don't give up. All the good stuff in life is hard and takes time and like challenges you, right? <laughs> Nike, you're back, but you're now tucked into bed. Is that where we're at, man? We're tucking you in. We're gonna say night, night pretty soon. Working hard is worth it for good food. Hell yeah, it is, Monastache. So really happy that we added that little bit of extra water to the masa before we started pressing these. If we didn't, the tortillas would actually just fall apart. They would be too dry. They wouldn't stay together. So 
like me pulling these off is I can actually, if I hold this up to the light, I can see my fingers through the tortilla. That's how thin we're going. where we're at so far. Good looking tortillas. What did we do? Two, four, six, seven, about halfway through. Okay, our pan is hot now. You guys want to watch me cook these, I'm sure. So let's come back over here. I am not going to put any oil in the cast iron pan. We should not need it, is the tortillas should not stick at all. So now that the pan is hot, I just turned it back down to medium. I think that's going to be perfect temperature wise. And our next step here is obviously as we cook these tortillas, they will eventually get dry if we leave them out uncovered. So I always like to kind of set up a cloth on whatever we're planning to serve them in. Probably just a pan of sorts to keep them warm. So come over here really quick. We just have a little pie plate. I'm gonna line it with the cloth. I'm gonna put the tortillas in there when they're cooked and be able to cover them. And that way they'll stay warm and also not dry out on us. want that set up right beside your pan because this is going to be quick. Not even, I think, 30 seconds aside for these tortillas. Let's do this, guys. First one going in. This is our tester. This will be a good indicator if your pan is hot enough or not. And you won't really get a sizzle, per se. You might get a little bit of puffing, maybe some air bubbles in there. Let's see if I turn this off, how this looks for you. A little bit better, I think. Yes, me too, Lidl. I love tacos. Flip this over. We're in a Tarantino film. Let's go, Nike. Communists do not like tacos. Okay, let's flip this over. So, just a little check on our tortilla make sure it's cooked so it's definitely cooked and as it kind of sits in that hot cloth it'll kind of soften up when we start to stack them on top of each other but at this point it's not quite pliable enough I feel like when we try and fill that is it might crack but we'll carry on that was our first one usually they get better as time goes on. So usually kind of my process is I put a tortilla in the pan, come over here, press one, go flip that, take the pressed tortilla out, put another ball in, take that one off the pan and keep going like that. So it's pretty quick, kind of like just going in a circle. Tortilla is made of water and masa, masa harina. Tacos are a day and hot sauce, Rook. So there was a little sizzle when I dropped that one in. Let's press our tortilla. We're not gonna waste any time here. Flip it. Come back over, press one more. So 
take it out. Now we have our tortilla. Take this one out. New one in. Two tortilla babies in our cloth. Keep those covered. Now we go to press the next one. And then we'll flip, etc. But if you have someone that likes to help you in the kitchen, this would be a good time to get a teammate, keep things going. But if not, to me, this is the most efficient way to do this. Let's flip this. Press. And now take this guy out. Come in with the new one. Cover that. Oh, we got a wild Sammy. <laughs> Yeah, hint, hint. That's also for you guys at home. I know a lot of people like to cook with their significant others. Two tins. Real quick. Sammy pressing tortillas. Too much muscle. Too much force. So see how it got super thin at the end and started to stick? That's okay. Now we will learn. I think we're both, you guys. They're under there? Okay, flip this tortilla. Yeah, Pendleton can't reach the counter. Well, he just needs a stool then, Rook. You giving me excuses right now? <laughs> okay, tortilla out, tortilla in. Tortilla. And actually at this point, guys, since now we're gonna go a little bit faster, we can actually turn on our deep frying oil for the fish. Get that heating up. We're looking for a 350 Fahrenheit to 375 Fahrenheit temperature. And that usually takes about 20 minutes to heat up. My heavy duty cast iron pan filled only halfway with canola oil. in. After this, we're going to make up the beer batter for our fish. And then we pretty much just have to wait for the oil to heat up. Shouldn't take too long. By the time we make our batter, give Pendleton a hug for me. Yeah, me too. Me too, Rook. Cute little doggo. That's it, guys. I helped. Sammy helped. Yeah, yeah, hint, hint, nudge, nudge. I get, it. I get it. I heard it. I came. I helped. <laughs> okay. Flip it. Good stuff, Sammy. One, two, what? Two at one time. You did two at once? Mm -hmm. What is this madness that Sammy's doing when I have my back turned? Flip it.
Did we triple flip it? No, we're only doing the double flip, Lidl. I'm sorry. Next. We have two, four, six, eight. Eight tortillas left. So I'll try not to get too distracted while we're doing this. Is coupons on? Yeah. Okay. But we do gotta go over some taco history as well. I think it's pretty interesting. Quite interesting. It's actually not like an ancient food. It's quite recent. So it is believed that the origin of the taco started in Mexican silver mines. So it came about sometime in the 19th century. So only two centuries ago. That's quite recent. The hypothesis about the taco comes from the fact that the first type of taco was called taco de minero, which translates to mean miners tacos. That makes sense. As you can see, the taco isn't an age-old cultural food. It's fairly new compared to some of the other Mexican foods dating back to Aztec times. The role of the taqueria, or the taco shop, is also an important element in the history of the taco. For many years, taquerias were mostly for working class Mexicans and many women migrants brought tacos to Mexico City to sell them for money. Maybe a touch more. Just put that one a touch more. These women eventually made Mexico City into a taco hub with many different styles and kinds of tacos that people could sample. Yeah, only people under 18 ate the tacos. <laughs> I hope not. That wouldn't be fair. So it probably isn't surprising that the real popularity for the taco came from the popular fast food chain, Taco Bell. The founder of Taco Bell, Glenn Bell, created a franchise for people that wanted to experience the taco, but didn't want to travel all the way to Mexico to taste one. The taco originally came to the US through migrants that traveled to the LA area, Los Angeles, in the early 1900s. It was originally seen as a low-class street food. Good night, Nike. Thank you for everything, man. Thank you for the resub as well. And I will catch you hopefully on Sunday. That's when I'll be back streaming with you guys. You don't eat enough Taco Bell? I don't think it's that good for you. Anyways, I think that's a good thing that you don't need a lot of Taco Bell. So the tacos that were sold as street food in the US were not traditional tacos that you would find in Mexico due to the fact that the ingredients that are available in the US are not the same as the ingredients that are available in Mexico. Fair enough. 
That makes sense, right guys? And let's just say the hard taco is not a traditional Mexican staple. This is not to say that Glenn Bell founded the hard taco. There is evidence that the hard taco shell existed in US Mexican restaurants nearly a decade before they were used in Taco Bell. Hey, three tortillas left after this one, guys. We're getting there. Our oil is already at 225. We have about 100 degrees left to go. It's heating up pretty quickly. David, thank you for the follow. Okay, Cookery, you're getting some rest as well. Have a great night. Thanks for stopping by. Take care of yourself and Mr. Cookery. And stay warm. It's been cold up here. Carrot Potato, welcome in. You're attending a digital wedding? Well, that sounds cool. I do like both as well. I shot both. But obviously, the soft shell taco, especially made with corn, is the more traditional preparation. Two left. Now I suppose I should look up a recipe for beer batter. Beer battered fish. Looking for something pretty crunchy, guys. This one recipe, five star rating, 34 reviews. Huh. Made by Chef Sunshine. It says it serves eight, so I'm probably going to Cut this in half. I don't like that recipe, not gonna lie, guys. Ooh, British? A British beer batter? That's actually a really nice one to use. I find it's more crunchy. No, it's tearing, guys. It's tearing. It means it's drying out. Okay, what does this recipe say? Keep scrolling. Flour, baking powder, milk, olive oil, water, salt, beer. Sounds about right. The British one, yeah, that's what I thought. They know how to do fish and chips. Probably gonna make too much batter, but eh, it's a pretty cheap ingredient if you have to end up throwing out a little bit. Okay guys, last tortilla going in the pan. Now we can Move on. That is so cool, carrot potato. Virtual wedding. That's what the world is coming to. Hey, our oil is at 300. I'm gonna turn it 
turn down this burner a touch now. Back down to medium, now that we're getting up there. And our tortilla pan, we can just turn off at this point. Okay. So, little pan of tortillas. Get them nice and warm in there. Keep those to the side. So we need one cup of all-purpose flour, baking powder. So that'll help keep the batter nice and airy, I think. Um, olive oil, milk, water, and beer. a little bit of fish. I'm going to grab the beer, okay guys? Hold tight. or a lager style beer usually turns out the best for beer batter. <laughs> Feels like we're in a traditional Mexican restaurant. Winning! Kind of wanted to create that environment today. So this is a Pacific Pilsner cheap beer. 5% alcohol. Definitely not hoppy. Okay. So it says, make up the batter, add all of the ingredients except the beer, and give it a light whisk. And then we're gonna add the beer in at the last minute, okay? You want your the, like, the fizz from the beer to really aerate the batter and that'll keep it really nice and light. So make this as close to possible to the frying time. Science oh no. Or I. Now you can we'll just pretend like that's not happening. Gotta love those ads on websites. Let's get a bowl. Maybe it'll be over. Are you tired of science? Never. I don't even know where that ad is on the site. It's so long. Care of your eyes on your I'm sorry, guys. <laughs> Making the recipe blind, I suppose. So, one cup of flour. How's our oil? Hovering around 350. Okay, I'm just gonna turn down the desktop audio for a sec so I can find this ad and shut it off. Term with aerobics. Using that isometric eye exercise system, you'll learn techniques so revolutionary, real doctors call them wrong. What even is and this? Dangerous. Okay, we're back. That was terrible. Using eye science. So one and a half teaspoons of baking powder. You heard it. Yeah, still through my microphone. Hopefully it doesn't come up again. Let's do this quick, quick. So half teaspoon. One teaspoon. One and a half teaspoons baking 
powder, seven tablespoons of milk. Who made this recipe? This is wild. I've never put milk into a beer batter either. Seven tablespoons of milk. I'm like second guessing this right now. Freaking me out. One. Two. Three. Four. Five. Six. Seven. This could be the secret though, guys, right? That might be the secret to good crispy fish. Half a tablespoon of olive oil. Yeah, we should have asked Ricer Man, guys. You guys ever seen Ricer Man on here? One tablespoon of water and then a pinch of salt. And then six tablespoons of beer. Teaspoon of salt. Let's crack our can. Can't be beer batter without the beer. You love watching his chippy shop. Me too. I don't have a lavalier mic, yet you you can understand me properly. The blue yeti is a pretty good mic, I have to say. I think I've learned to talk louder though when I get farther away from it. So six tablespoons of lager or pilsner. Two, three, four, five, six. You don't think Ricer uses milk in his batter? I doubt it. Like I said, this is new to me. Okay, our oil is at temp. Let's do this, guys. Whisk this up. I don't think we want any lumps here either. And if this is too thick, it says, loosen it up with just a touch more beer, which I think we'll have to do. She be thick. Yeah, Friday is a huge day for chip shops. This is a Catholic, right? I'm gonna add a touch more. Obviously we want this to just kind of coat the fish, right? We don't want it too thick, to have too heavy of a batter, but we also don't want it too thin so that it just all comes off when we put it in the oil. I think something like that is probably a really nice consistency. So we'll set that aside. Now we can go into seasoning our fish up. So right before we go to fry it. Dump that all on there. Fresh red snapper is what we're working with today. Let's say kind of along the same lines as a cod, tilapia, etc. Spread out all of our pieces. I'm gonna quickly wash my fingers. Don't want to put yucky fish fingers in our salt. I'm gonna go with some cracked pepper over this first. Hey Emily, how's it going? Welcome to Cook with Kate. We are just getting ready 
to put a beer batter onto this fish and fry it up for our fish tacos. Taco Tuesday Fiesta is what's going on today. So, generous amount of salt on all of our pieces. Keep in mind they're pretty small, so don't need too, too much. But there's not too much salt in that batter. And you definitely don't want plain tasting fish when you fry it. But when it comes out of the fryer, you're always able to put more salt on the outside after. In my opinion though, fried food, you should usually season the food on the inside and also season it after it comes out of the fryer. This is Pacific Red Snapper. You could also use a cod or a rockfish or tilapia. Welcome in dirt bag. Jones and Bones, yeah, battered fish, so good. So this recipe is saying to put it in a touch of flour first. So let's just get a small bowl of flour. Don't want to use too much because that's gonna have to get thrown out after. Is we're contaminating the flour with the raw fish. So in, unless you plan on frying up more fish pretty soon, you can keep it in the fridge, but definitely don't keep it out at room temp. Okay, so now over to the stove top. It's that time, guys. Time to start frying. Yeah, cross-contamination, that's a nope. <laughs> yeah, you could also use puffer fish. Thanks for the follow, Emily. Much appreciated. Okay, trying to make some room over here. And then kind of one last thing that we have to get ready is just a plate lined with paper towel. How hot is that pan? Pretty hot. So that when the fish comes out of the fryer, we can kind of drain off any excess oil. So first step, dredging our fish in the flour. What that's gonna do is help the batter stick onto the fish. I'm gonna say these will take maybe about a minute, a minute and a half to cook because the pieces are so small. We definitely don't want dry fish. I'm 
just kind of scraping the excess batter off the side of the bowl before I drop this in. Rinse off our hands. We'll flip those about halfway through cooking, which obviously not going to be too far from now. Kind of a golden brown color is usually our telltale sign. Should flip over. Sometimes they're a pain in the butt. really don't want to stay flipped over. Got to help them a touch. Get over here, you little piece. But do try your best to get it to flip over because you want a nice even coloring, right? You don't want to see any naked pieces of fried fish. You just gotta hold those pieces down. So our oil just dropped in temp. So from 385 is where we started. We're going down to almost 350. So we almost dropped about 30 degrees, guys. These three pieces here, or at least these two, I'm gonna say these are probably done. So onto our towel lined plate. Take these smaller pieces as well. Time. Check this out, guys. Wow. Yeah, that color looks really nice, hey? Just a little sprinkle of salt on the outside while it's still warm. That way it'll stick, kind of soak in. Thanks, Jones. So I'm going to try this little guy. See how he did. Oh, nice. So our fish, this will kind of focus in for us. We have to take this plate out. Obviously steaming, it's hot. And if you can kind of tell, it's shiny, it's moist, it's not dry. Mmm. Mm-hmm. I think we flavored that really well. As far as the salt goes, I don't think I'd add too much more. It's really hot. Obviously it just came out of the fryer, but the batter is really nice and crispy. It's a touch doughy on the inside, but so far, it is holding up. It's not just going soggy on us. So I feel good about that. Okay, our oil's coming back up. Let's go back over to the stove pot, quickly cook these other pieces while these ones are still warm. And then it's time to plate up our tacos. We're finally there, guys. So, 
threads our pieces in the flower where we start, drop them into the batter. And sorry, Indog, there is no creme fraiche going with these, but I did make a creamy salsa verde with avocado. That's our sauce of choice, as well as hot sauce, obviously. A chipotle hot sauce. So there we go, guys. Now we can kind of just flip these over in the batter. Pans are gonna get a little bit yucky. But it's so worth it. Now, we'll start to drop our fish. Careful when you're dropping it in. You wanna kind of slide it in. You don't just wanna drop it, otherwise that oil's gonna splash you. And if you can see those three little marks on the top of my hand, that's what happens. Those are about a week old now. Those are not friendly burns. Come here, fish. up a little bit of lime, please. I'll finish this off. These little guys to swim around a little bit. They always like to kind of huddle together with each other. You missed what kind of fish. Okay, and sorry, Emily, the type of oil I'm using is just a canola oil to fry. That has one of the highest smoke points, so it's perfect for frying. And I'm using a Pacific Red Snapper frog leg. Let's see what Sammy's got going on. You looked up and down. Yeah, and then there was a bearded man. Deep frying is actually really fun. 
Except it makes your whole house smell like deep fryer. That's a little bit dangerous, but I definitely like the risk. So there's a difference kind of in color compared to a hotter oil and a not so hot oil. So one last little season on the fish that just came out. Grab our tortillas that have been resting. Sammy's primed. No pico? I didn't make any pico. Did you want pico? What's up? You don't know what you want? We're keeping it simple. I know I want to eat this. He knows he wants to eat it, guys, and I think that's all that matters. So, kind of our plate of condiments. He'll turn it this way for us. So, cabbage, radish, lime, tortillas creamy salsa verde, crispy fish. Let's get into it. Very, very traditional toppings for a fish taco. And yeah, trying to keep it basically as simple as possible to make it look doable for you guys. It's not that scary. I'll get the dog nut. Yeah, you just need a margarita. Dog nut. Or maybe a shot of tequila. It's pretty warm. I'm gonna open the window. I got rosy cheeks. Standing over the deep fryer all day. You take photos? I did take photos. You did? Let's get in there. Let's go. Oh, he's going with the fish first. See, I would go with the cabbage first so that the fish weighs it down. There's our starting point, guys. Thanks, Jones. I really appreciate the love. Fresh piece of fish. Oh, maybe I forgot to turn that one down. Yeah. <laughs> Crispy fish. Let's, let's salsa this. So look how it just kind of coats the fish. It doesn't just run off. Yep, yeah, this is gonna be messy. Line up your radishes. Squeeze the lime. That's a big piece of fish for our little tortilla. But we're going in. This is what I was taught how to eat a taco. Pinkies out, guys. And then you won't get your taco juices running down your elbow. So you lift up that part. There's nowhere for the juices to run. And gotta go for the hunch. Mmm. Mmm. That's a good taco. The fish isn't dry. There's my bite. Our tortilla staying together. Which one's the other fish? These ones. Yeah. They're all pretty warm though. Mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly. Exactly how you drink your tea. Pinkies out. No mess. So, really nice flavor from the corn tortilla. I have to say it tastes so fresh. A good crunch from both the cabbage and the radish. We didn't even season those things. So we're going more for just texture there. And then most of our flavoring is coming from the creamy salsa verde. So cilantro, the lime, the onion, the garlic, the tomatillos. 
They need beer with dinner, Monastash. Sammy just had his second tequila shot. I've had one tequila. We do have a beer in the fridge, though. I don't know how we're feeling so far. I think right now we're more focused on food than anything. Sammy is fading away. There is no talking. <laughs> there's cabbage, there's sauce in his beard. He's in Taco Town. Mm. Wow, that's good. Very inexpensive meal, by the way. The fish costs less than $4. We're barely even going to make a dent. We're like, yeah, we'll probably eat about half of the fish that we fried up. So what, we eat $2 worth of fish? The masa, I think that bag might cost $8. I'm going to say we use maybe 50 cents worth of masa to make our tortillas with water nonetheless. So let's say that's a free ingredient. Our cabbage, we didn't even use half of the cabbage. I'm gonna guess that cabbage was around $3. So let's say a buck. The radish, maybe a dollar worth. I think the most expensive thing here is our sauce. So let's say all in all, this whole meal maybe cost $10 for two people. But it did take time, right? It took time to make it properly. We got a doggo. Doggo. Where you at? Come here. Sit. Doggo just looking at each of us. Doggo? Doggo. Doggo? Doggo. <laughs> Cooking is planning. It totally is. Like I did something that I've not done yet after a year streaming. I planned out my whole month of February ahead of time about what I was gonna cook. It took a lot of time to come up with those menus, but it's so much easier now that I have them planned. Just gotta make the grocery list and cook the stuff. Sammy's just dipping the fish. Going in for a fish dip. What are your guys' favorite tacos to have? Fish tacos, definitely one of my faves. And chorizo, for sure. Another one. It's hard to choose though. Like carnitas, the pork. Really, really good as well. I'm excited in Chelsea Market in New York City for tacos. Breakfast tacos, nice. Yes, Monastash. I love breakfast burritos. That's definitely one of my go-tos. Chicken tacos, all tacos. I think I'm with you, Rook. It's too hard to choose a favorite. It's a tie between fish, shrimp, al pastor, fried sweetbread. Ooh, here's another crazy taco that I've had before is beef tongue. It's actually quite popular in Mexico. Beef tongue taco, very nice. Might sound weird, but please don't knock it till you try it. Cheers, guys. What is this? How does the tequila taste after the tacos? You've never had it in tacos. It's so nice, Monastash. Like beef tongue is so fatty, right? So it really works well. Swedish taco, cumin minced beef, iceberg lettuce, corn, cucumber, salsa, and sour cream. Yes, I like it. It's chock full of good stuff.
Okay, so we're gonna read Q pins today. Yeah. That's what's going on. finish this off we're full already I mean I've only had two tacos I'll probably have two more off stream I'm just such a slow eater though when I talk to you guys it's like I forget to eat it's like I'll just hold my food and talk and it's like oh yeah Monastash, I think we're gonna raid Cupins. Do you know Cupins? Okay, let's finish this last part off before it gets all messy. And you make your tacos huge and you pound four at a time. That is epic. take it and he made a mess did you pour tequila everywhere just wasting the tequila it has oh t girl's on as well oh she's making goodies for graham tonight i have had taco fino we'll probably do t girl then yeah i didn't know she was on taco fino we had that last week yeah. Oh, terrific. We took a trip into the city. Really good. You count seven fish dicks, as your lady would say. I love that. Okay, we are going to raid Tig Girl then. Tig Girl TK, guys. Another wonderful food streamer who we've actually had the pleasure to meet up with. Last year... We met up with her and her partner in Portland. Very amazing couple. Cannot wait to meet up with them again. So let's go over to Tig Girl TK, AKA Stacy. Show them some love, get your onions ready, give them a follow, maybe hang out a bit. Apparently she's making food today for Monastash's husband. <laughs> Daily Dasher, hey, how are you? Am I sharing with you? We could do that. I mean, you get over here in the next couple of hours, there might be some left. We were um, watching some of your stream today, Daily Dasher. Really fun adventure. Good idea grabbing the hand sanitizer after all those push-ups. Yeah, for sure. Yes, I shot Bo. You make that chicken taco. Okay, one more tequila from the road. Tequila number dose. 
I'm gonna send you guys off. Thanks for all the love today, guys. A ton of resubs. One 11 month resub. We're getting up there. Oh, she goes down good. Makes you feel all warm inside, doesn't it? Yeah, smooth. Exactly, and dog. Okay, guys, you take care. Upcoming this week for our menu. So buckwheat crepes on Sunday with creamy leeks and baked eggs. Are you ready for this? On Monday, we're doing a pizza stream. Cast iron pizza. We're doing two different types of pizza. And then on Tuesday, duck confit with pressure cooker cassoulet. So stay tuned for that coming up this week and next week. Hope you guys have a wonderful time. See you later. Love you all. Night night. <laughs>